Hi everybody, it's on. Hi. So there was another like dirty birdie book that went. Um, I don't even know what this book's about. I bought a bunch of them. Never read any of them. I'm never gonna read the book after I've seen the movie. You can judge me all the live long day, it's totally fine. There's a lot of blackout book shopping that happened here. I will not get tempted, I will not get tempted, I will not get tempted. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to a smidge of a book on haul. So we get on the floor for two reasons here usually, haul and unhaul. And today is an unhaul day. So I am continuing to work on culling my book collection and I'm trying to find a balance between ruthless and realistic. <laughs> so anyway, what I'm trying to do is not have piles of books piled all over other pieces of furniture. So I was doing a little reorg, not like, anyway, I have decided I'm gonna get rid of some books. So some of these books will be on my Pango shop. Some of these books are going directly to free little libraries because they've been maybe a little bit more dog-eared or maybe I bought them secondhand and I just don't feel like they're sellable, if that makes sense. So anyway, let's just dive right into it. In absolutely no particular order is, in absolutely no particular order here are the books that I'm getting rid of. <laughs> the first one is The Cousins by Karen McManus. I read this book whenever ago. I need to make sure I am like pulling out any bookmarks or tabs in the front, see? Girls gotta check, because I used to slash sometimes still put post-its in the front. So I enjoyed this book. This is about Millie Aubrey and Jonah. Con Ed is digging up the sidewalk out front and it's causing traffic. So anyway, so their parents were ostracized by their grandmother years ago. This is set on a fictional island off of Cape Cod. I had a fun time with this book. At the end of the day, most of these books that I'm getting rid of that I've read, I'm not gonna read again. And if I haven't read it, I'll let you know. Okay, next up is Mother May I by Jocelyn Jackson. This is an arc that I got whenever ago. I read this and really enjoyed it, but I won't read it again. So this says revenge doesn't wait for permission. This came out in, I don't know when. I don't wholly remember the story, 2021. Seems like it was longer than that. But I had fun with it. Kind of dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things. It was a good book. Someone else can enjoy it now. And then the next arc I have is The Other People by CJ Tudor. So I enjoyed this one as well. I really had a great time with The Chalk Man, which was her first book. And I do have a couple more of her books in my collection to read. So I enjoyed this one. This was the one where the guy is like stuck on, it's not the highway because it doesn't take place in the US, but I'm not smart enough at this point in the day to be able to tell you where he is. But he's basically stuck in traffic and there's a car in front of him and he sees a little girl trapped in the back seat that is his daughter. And he calls home to his wife to be like, oh my God, like I saw our daughter trapped in the back seat of this person's car, what's happening? But when he gets home, cause he can't get in touch with anyone, he finds out that his wife and daughter are dead. So who was the girl that he saw? What is happening? CJ Tudor can write a creepy book. And that's like the opening couple pages of the book. So don't worry, I didn't just tell you everything that happened in it. Okay. Next book, I have not read this one. This is called Killer Deal by Sophie Sarenbrandt. So I definitely had an issue a couple years ago when I discovered Better World Books and Thrift Books. And I binge bought books like it was my job and I can only wish it was my job. And I don't even know what I bought half the time. So there's a lot of blackout book shopping that happened here. So... I'm just gonna let it go. I'm just gonna let it go. Um, and ditto on the next one. This is before she was found by Heather Gutenkoff. So the main reason I'm letting this go is because the cover is like destroyed. The book is a little on the less clean side. The drawback of online thrifting is even though it says, because I would only buy books that were very good or excellent condition, we seem to have differing opinions on what that means. So, it's, it's not the kind of book I wanna bring into bed with me at night. 
and I like to read in bed at night. So I can get that from my library. I'm not worried about it. I just don't, I never gravitate towards the physical copy of it. So there you go. Okay, next up is Good Neighbors by Sarah Langan. I read this when it came out. I really enjoyed this one too. This was like the Long Island neighborhood with the sinkhole where one of the kids falls into it in the neighborhood. And there's a lot of judgment about the parents in the neighborhood and about each other and how people live their lives. So I really like binge this book and loved it. It's, it's not like fast paced thriller. I don't know if it's like a little social horror maybe. And it definitely had, so Sarah Langan writes horror books, had the sort of overarching feeling of like, evil doesn't have to be the supernatural monster like evil can be the person next door kind of a thing so i did really enjoy this i've held on to it for a long time ultimately i'm not going to reread it so again somebody else should be able to enjoy this book and then i'm getting rid of this copy of the great gatsby so for my birthday i think it was two years ago amanda from the curly reader bought me this stunning copy of the great gatsby so i don't need two of this book so i'm gonna unhaul the also stunning, but not the one Amanda bought me version of Great Gatsby. Okay, next up. So I have Her Three Lives by Kate Hollihan. I haven't read this one. She has a book about a writer, which I have, which I'm excited about. And then I have another one of her books that I have read. Anyway, this one is like public life, private life, secret life. I want to say there's like a home invasion and cameras and some sketchy stuff going on here. It's not one that I've gravitated to yet. Again, I can get it from the library. I'm trying to be a little ruthless with some of these books. So that's one of them. The next one is Juliet Naked. So I a thousand percent bought this at a library sale. I saw the, I was gonna say, I saw the book. I saw the movie with Ethan Hawke and I fell in love with it. And then I saw the book and I was like, oh, I loved that movie. Let me buy the book. <sighs> Come on. I'm never gonna read the book after I've seen the movie. I bought this years ago at a library sale and it is also originally held real estate on my bookshelf it's been holding real estate in a box under my bed so somebody else can enjoy it i have a few ml arledge books so this is part of a series i want to say eeny meeny is the first one abby from crime by the book recommended these books i bought a bunch of them never read any of them so this was a series where I want to say people said it got better as you got into it. And let's be honest, I have enough series that I'm already in the middle of that I'm not going to start a new one. So I know Lindsay from Lindsay's Little, Ri Lindsay's Little Library, Words, read Eeny Meeny and I feel like she was lukewarm on it. And I just don't have the bandwidth right now to read a series where you have to read a few books before it gets good. So somebody else can enjoy it or maybe somebody who's already into it might be excited for that and then I have The Other Passenger by Louise Candlish so I haven't read this one either you can judge me all the live long day it's totally fine and I'm not going to so <laughs> there you go I'm not even gonna make like I'm not I'm not trying to make excuses I'm not not trying to make excuses eeny meeny first book in the series somebody can have fun with it there's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. I want to say this is a YA book. I've had this for a long flippin' time. And we have this girl, Makani Young, came to live with her grandmother, adjusting to her new life in Nebraska. And we've got some terror. This is YA. Students start to die. I have some other YA books that I am more interested in. This came out in 2017, although I'm kind of like... So I shouldn't open books. People live through such pain only once. Pain comes again, but it finds a tougher surface. That's a quote from Willa Cather from The Song of the Lark. In ninth grade, I did, we had to do a year long project and pick an author and I chose Willa Cather. And I have a soft spot for Willa, but I don't know that I'm gonna read this book. If you guys saw my last unhaul, that, I mean, it's, the book has nothing to do with Willa Cather, but. <laughs> You guys saw my first unhaul. I did rescue a book out of that pile when I was reading about it. I don't think there's a book in this pile with a girl named Audrey in it. That was kind of the, the turning point for me. So we'll see. Okay, next up is, is Tell Me What Happened by Chelsea Sedoti. So I want to say Amber read this book and just said like it was okay. 
this is a missing she's missing they were with her there are stories about the woods around salvation creek and the people who have gone missing there now their friend is one of them so this is told all in transcript and i do love the concept of this i think this was an after good girl's guide to murder book and after like rules of vanishing like it sounded in that vein which got me excited but now i feel like i'm less excited and somebody else will enjoy it more than me so i trust amber somebody else can have fun with that book another ya book again another theme here this is called the best lies by sarah lou obsession can poison even the sweetest of sweetest of friendships not swedish friendships sweetest of friendships i liked this cover i haven't read this one either i felt alive in a way i hadn't in a long time maybe ever looking over at elise her long hair whipping around in the wind i remember thinking that this was the start of an adventure the beginning of the rest of my life we were a forest fire wild and full of rage we were a galaxy unto ourselves a million stars blazing bright everything was possible then um i don't even know what this book's about i will not get tempted i will not get tempted i will not get tempted okay next up is the lightness by emily temple if you guys have been here since early days you have seen this book pop up before still haven't read it and i'm finally coming to terms with the fact that i ultimately will not so this i want to say had like some cult vibes to it and it says it juxtaposes fairy tales with quantum physics cognitive science with religious fervor and the passions and obsessions of youth i'm, I'm just I, i'm just not gonna do it i think i saw that it was a cult book and i bought it and then i i don't know what i thought it was but never been read have fun guys <laughs> okay next up is friend request so this is maria wants to be friends but maria is dead isn't she this is by laura marshall i have debated unhauling this book many times i haven't read it i tried to read it a couple of years ago when i had to go back to work in the summer of 2021 when i had to reopen our office for people to be able to come into i was back commuting on the train and i needed a book to read and Honestly, it was a tumultuous time. It was still kind of scary having to go into the city, having to be on the train, having to be around people. And I started to read this book the first day I went in. This is why like, I specifically connect things to this book. And it was not clicking with me. I wound up picking up Beach Read instead, like the next day when I went to work and plowed through that book. So I was not in the mood for a dark thriller, clearly. And I feel like I will always associate this book with that time. So no disrespect to Laura Marshall, but it's just not going to work for me. Okay, next up is Love People Use Things by Joshua Fields, Milburn, and Ryan Nicodemus. They are the minimalists. This is an arc I got a couple years ago from Celadon. So I have watched a lot of their podcasts. Like they do podcasts, but they show up on YouTube. I was going to say show up on Instagram. So it's all about living with less, stepping things, how it all impacts your relationship, like why you buy the things, why you have the stuff. And I kind of skimmed it. All right, and then two more. The first one is the Siren, not The Sirens, just Sirens by Joseph Knox. I don't even know why. I don't even know why this book is on my radar. I don't even know how I wound up picking it up. It is... The mission is suicide, infiltrating the inner circle of enigmatic criminal Zane Carver is dangerous enough. This is like a, I don't know, this is like a spy novel. I Like, I honestly don't know why I picked this up or like what led me to this book. I don't know how long I've had it. It's from 2017. Ah! So I, I have it and it's a detective story it's a debut and there's really great things on the back of it but again there's other books i'm going to read instead and then the last book i have is the perfect mother by M by amy malloy i almost said emily malloy by amy malloy so i have heard good things about this book but again there's so many other books on my shelf that i feel like i'm going to read instead i feel like she wrote goodnight beautiful which i read last year which i enjoyed 
So this is like a night out, a few hours of fun. That's all it was meant to be. And we have a group of May mothers, new moms whose babies were born in the same month. This is set in Brooklyn. They go out for drinks and then it says something goes terrifyingly wrong. One of the babies is taken from his crib, I guess when all the moms were out. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, I, I just, again, when push comes to shove, it is not the book that I have been tempted to pick up. And in the, if I don't see it, it doesn't exist category. This was also unfortunately living in a box. And when I pulled it out, I was like, I'm just, it's time. Somebody else can enjoy that book. So those are the books I'm getting rid of at this stage. There were a couple more arcs that went. There was another like dirty birdie book that went. I don't even know why I held on to it. I have stopped with my online thrifting. My only exception, exceptions, my only exceptions to that rule is if I'm thirstily looking for something I cannot get anywhere else, like Jennifer Hillier Freak or Creep and Hardcover, which I'm still on the obsessive quest for. You can only find like good editions of it maybe, which I don't trust and they're like $35. I love her, but like even I have a limit. And I'm still looking for a better copy of like the original UK hardcover of Final Girls by Riley Sager. Like it's those kinds of things. There's a handful of books that you can no longer purchase straight away that I would love to get. But I am really actively trying to break the habit of just buying books for cheap because they're cheap. So that's part of this. So I did not go through all of my shelves or anything like that. I went through my book carts and pulled some of these off. And then I was also, like I said, going through a box. I have the books that I have listed for Pango are in a box under my bed. And there was another box of books under my bed. So I went through that and it was a mix of Pango books and books that I was keeping. So that's what I went through. So again, I'm going to continue to slowly go through it. I'm not going to necessarily document every book if there's like a one off that I'm doing, but do want to continue to share what I'm getting rid of, share the journey with you guys. And yeah, that's it. So please don't tell me to read any of these. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want to, obviously. But yeah, I'm really like I said, I talked about this in a different video, trying to make space for space not trying to make space to bring new stuff in. So there's been a little bit of an influx lately and I need to make space for it. And even if I had the space for a new bookshelf, I'm trying to not buy more containers. If you guys follow Dana K. White, who is like a decluttering genius, she's all about like, if it doesn't fit in the container, the answer is not more containers. The answer is less stuff. And like your closet is a container, your bookshelf is a container. So the answer for trying to make, make way for all of your things is not to buy more things to put your things in, things, things, things. It's to let go of what you don't actually need and just try and make some tough choices. So that's what we're doing. So thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in today. Like I said, I will have some of these will be listed on Pango. There's other books that are on there. There is a library sale coming up here at the beginning of May. I will be making a big donation to them. It's one of the libraries I used to go to when I was growing up. So I am going to wipe out some of my Pango books that just aren't moving. I've dropped some prices, but I get it. Like not everybody wants books. So I am trying to clean out also in preparation for that, but I am going to kind of wash out some of my pango list too. So if you guys are interested, great. If you're not totally fine, do you, there's no pressure ever. I just like to share what I have going on and yeah, that's that. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye everybody.